So this is what we know. We know that 70 to 90 percent of the things that we call disease, chronic disease, is related to lifestyle and environment. Who you eat with, what you eat, are you eating with anger, are you, are you happy, is your glass half full, are you optimistic, do you have a community, are you socially connected, where are you at emotionally, mentally, spiritually, all of that determines our health. Our genes are important. Our genes are important, but you have to think of the genes, in my opinion, this way. If I have a book of life that has 23 chapters that I inherit from my parents, my 23 chapters of life, the genes I turn on and off are determined by the life that I live, right? I'm fascinated by the identical twin studies because identical twins, when they come out, they look the same genetically, but do they look the same when they're 50 and 60 years old? They've turned different genes on and off. You'll see an identical twin. I have a friend. Her sister was a big smoker. She died of a massive heart attack at 38 years old. My friend is an identical twin to her sister, now 58 living a healthy lifestyle, right? So the concept of epigenetics, the genes you turn on, the genes you turn off, is real. So if someone says to you tomorrow, you have the gene for diabetes, you're not going to say, well, let me sit behind the desk and eat potato chips and mashed potato because I'm going to get diabetes. You're going to say, no, I'm going to go out, I'm going to eat green leafy vegetables, and I'm going to eat nuts, and I'm going to be on a low glycemic diet, and I'm going to exercise and keep my weight down because I don't want to express the diabetes gene. Does that make sense? Now, in the world of pharmacogenomics, pharmacology, I think the genetic information is phenomenal because it's enabling us to understand what drugs work better in which people. For example, we have genes that we know increase the risk for people to develop muscle pain from statin therapy. We can look at the, the, what's called the genetic SNPs to determine should this person be on a high or a low Coumadin dose. So this concept of pharmacogenomics is very important. Do you have vitamin D receptor defects, right? So if you have the vitamin D receptor uh, polymorphisms, you need more vitamin D. That may explain why you can't get your vitamin D up on your 5,000 international units a day. Or some people that shake a lot or are nervous, easily startled, they may have a genetic polymorphism on the gene what's called COMT, that breaks down adrenaline. So we're starting to understand this more in the language of science, and how do we apply this information to practice? So in you know, my practice, we look at the ones that we can make a difference on, and then we put, we call it personalized medicine, a program that's unique for the individual into practice. So genes are important, but right now, we still have to work in this area if we want to be healthy.